Over the last couple of weeks, I've been using the Samsung Galaxy S7 Edge as my main phone. Today I decided to talk about the specifications of the phone and review them to let people know if this is worth buying. This is the Galaxy S7 Edge specs video. Hello everybody, my name is Matt and this is Real World Review. What I'm going to do is go over the specs of the phone and at the end I will score the phone based on my personal experiences as a user and cell phone repairman. If you have any questions, let me know in the comment section or on Twitter at Matt of RWR. Let's get started. To start, our first category is the outside hardware. Let's start with the display. The display is a 5.5 inch dual edge Super AMOLED screen with a resolution of 1440 by 2560, totaling 534 pixels per inch. The maximum brightness is about 500 nits, which is very high for an AMOLED display. There is Corning Gorilla Glass 4 covering that AMOLED display, making the front scratch resistant. The screen to body ratio is about 76% but has very minimal bezels. Let's talk about the rest of the front. We start at the top where the earpieces and the sensors are. There is a speaker grill that covers the earpiece and to the right of that is a 5 megapixel front camera. To the left are the proximity and ambient light sensors. Oddly enough there is no front facing microphone but there is an LED for notifications. On the bottom portion there are three buttons. Two light up and are capacitive, one being the recents and the other being the back button. And the middle is the home button, which doubles as a fingerprint scanner. This is the last Galaxy S device with the physical home button. Moving on to the frame. On the bottom is a micro USB port, a microphone, 10 holes for the loudspeaker, and a headset jack. On the right side, there is a small power button. On the left side, there are the volume up and volume down buttons. On the top, there is a single hole for a microphone and a tray that holds a SIM card and a memory card. On the back of the device is a 12 megapixel camera that is slightly protruding out of the back, along with a single LED flash unit. Below that LED is a heart rate monitor. Under all of this is a slightly curved piece of glass. As for the size, the device is 150.9 millimeters tall, 72.6 millimeters wide, and 7.7 millimeters thick, or 5.9 inches tall, 2.8 inches wide, and 0.3 inches thick. As for the weight, the S7 Edge is 157 grams or 5.54 ounces. The phone is water resistant, but it does not have a user removable battery or back. And now we move on to the cameras. The rear camera is a 12 megapixel sensor with a single LED flash and dual pixel autofocus. The aperture is f1.7 and the pixel size is 1.4 micrometers. The phone supports different camera features like optical image stabilization, raw image, smile and face detection, and high dynamic range. The rear camera can record video in a couple of ways. You can record 4K at 30 frames per second, 1440 at 30 frames per second, 1080p at 30 or 60 frames per second, 720p at 30 frames per second, and slow motion video can be captured at only 720p at 240 frames per second. Oddly enough, this phone allows for one-to-one -one capture of 1440 by 1440 at 30 frames per second. The front camera is a 5 megapixel sensor with a f1.7 aperture. It allows for a max of 1440 recording at 30 frames per second. That's all Samsung says about the front camera. The next category is the inside hardware. As usual, we start with the processor. The processor in this phone is a 64-bit Qualcomm Snapdragon 820 chip. It is a 14 nanometer quad core processor with two cores running at 2.15 gigahertz and the other two running at 1.6 gigahertz. Geekbench gives the phone a score of around 1726 for the single core and 4009 for the multi-core test. The GPU is an Adreno 530 that runs at 624 megahertz. While testing the GPU, Geekbench gives a score of about 6983. The phone has 4GB of LPDDR4 RAM, which is pretty standard. The model I'm reviewing is the G935T, which is T-Mobile based. The phone supports 1G, 2G, 3G, and 4G, assuming that the market you're in still supports those, along with LTE bands 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 7, 8, 12, 18, 19, 20, 29, 30, 38, 39, 40, and 41. As for Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, the Wi-Fi chip is at 802.11a, b, g, n, e, a, c, MIMO, and the Bluetooth is version 4.2. The phone also supports NFC, GPS, and GLONASS. The battery is a 3600 milliamp lithium ion cell that is supposed to last all day. Samsung claims that the battery will give you up to 27 hours of talk time and up to 16 hours of internet use. The phone does support Quick Charge 3.0 and there is also fast wireless charging assuming you have both chargers. 
The phone comes out of the box with Android 6.0 Marshmallow and has been updated to Android 7.0 Nougat. This phone supports a bunch of different audio formats like FLAC, OGG, M4A, and WAVE. As for video playback, the phone supports a few formats like MP4, AVI, and MKV. Now that we have gone over the specs, it is time for us to give this phone a score. Note that this phone comes with 32GB and can be purchased new for around $570 and used for about $230. You can find these phones with 64 or 128 gigabytes, but one, they are difficult to come across, and two, the phone takes a memory card, so it shouldn't be that big of an issue. It should also be noted that this phone is almost two years old, and most people will want to buy this used, and the scoring does account for that. Let's start with the frame. The phone is made out of glass. The front is mainly glass, and the back is glass as well. Since the screen and the back are both curved, it makes it easier to break. With this said, the phone looks amazing. The phone fits nice in your hands and it doesn't feel like it's cutting into your hands like the Samsung S6 Edge Plus did. The back camera is still protruding but only by a few millimeters. With this said, it is still very easy and very common for these to break. The metal frame around the device holds up pretty well and it doesn't bend much under pressure. Overall, I will give the outside score a 7.5 out of 10. Next is the AMOLED screen. I love AMOLED screens especially at 1440p. I don't care about the complaints about burn-in and being washed out in the sun because it doesn't really happen much on this phone. I have seen these phones with burn-in, but that's after a long time of usage. In this case, my phone is pretty much new, so screen burn-in was obviously not an issue for me, and it has never been for the last 7 plus years of using OLED devices. The colors look amazing on the phone, and the always-on display is a nice touch. As for the edge display, it is there, but I find it very gimmicky. The screen rolls the image off, which is pretty cool, but I never use the edges to be more productive. To each his own, I guess. The screen size is perfect for me, but 5.5 inches may be too much for some people, especially if you're coming from the 5.1 inch Samsung Galaxy S6 Edge. Lastly, the pink line does happen, whether you've had the screen replaced or not. With this said, Samsung seemed to fix the issue a couple months after the release, so you should be good. If anything, there have been cases where Samsung would fix the issue for free even if your phone is out of warranty. Just depends on who you talk to. Given the upsides and downsides of the screen, I feel it deserves an 8.5 out of 10. Next is the inside hardware. The Snapdragon 820 processor is nice, but I feel like Samsung slows down this phone. Don't get me wrong, the phone is fast and the benchmark scores don't lie, but there are times where apps will just hang, even when there's nothing in the background. I feel Android Nougat is to blame, but I can't be too sure. The 3600 milliamp battery is large on paper, but it still is pretty decent. Sure, it can get you through the day, but it sucks knowing that the phone can't get you through two days with almost twice the battery capacity of an iPhone 8. To be fair, the battery is new, but they do degrade after about a year or so of daily usage. At the time, 32GB was pretty generous, but the addition of the SD card slot is awesome. With this said, it is disappointing that Samsung took it away on the S6 and brought it back on the S7, as if memory card support was a new thing. Lastly, the phone does get pretty warm. Even basic usage will cause the phone to get pretty warm, and that's when it's 65 degrees out. I can only imagine how hot it will get during the summer. There is a heat pipe in there that's supposed to remove the heat from the processor to the outside of the phone, so I guess it makes sense that the phone does get warm. Overall, I will give the phone a 7.5 out of 10 for the inside hardware. Bringing back old features is a mean thing to do to your customers. Next is the camera. As always on the Samsung phones, the back camera is absolutely amazing. There were people that got butthurt over Samsung moving from a 16 megapixel sensor to a 12 megapixel sensor, but I see no issues with this move, other than capturing a slightly smaller image. The autofocus is crazy fast, and this is the main reason that I wanted this phone when it launched back in 2016. The back camera is a Samsung or a Sony sensor depending on how the phone is made and they are the same sensors that are found in the Galaxy S7, S7 Active, and the Note 7, RIP. The phone supports optical image stabilization so the video recording is silky smooth. Capturing 4K at 30 frames per second and 1080p at 60 frames per second is pretty standard on Android phones, even to this day. The front camera is a decent 5 megapixel sensor. Sure, they could have gone with a bigger sensor, but is it really needed? Just like other Samsung phones, images look very warm and the detail seems to blend into each other when taking pictures in dimly lit areas. However, during the day, the images look perfect. I still believe that this camera gets an 8.25 out of 10. Next is the software. The phone comes with Android 6.0 Marshmallow and has been updated to Android 7.0 Nougat. The software is nice and has a bunch of features, but TouchWiz always kills me. 
There's something about it that just makes me want to buy a stock Android phone. Some people love TouchWiz, but I'm not one of them. Look at those emojis. Horrible. With this said, there are some things that Samsung puts on this phone that I love using, like the always-on display and the quick launch for the camera. I just wish that there was an easier way to change the software to stock Android on this phone. Software never gets put into the scoring, so I won't feel bad giving it a 6 out of 10. The last score is for the future-proofing score. The phone came out a couple years ago, so most of the issues that this phone will have should have popped up by now. The major issues that happen with this phone are the pink line, and that's, that's about it. There are little things that are missing, like the infrared blaster and USB-C, but those aren't deal breakers. This phone already handled two years of usage without common major failures, so I don't see any new issues popping up anytime soon. Oh, the phone is water resistant, so that's pretty cool. I don't know what else to say, this phone isn't supposed to be a huge upgrade from the S6 Edge, but it is still a pretty good phone. If anything, it seems like a more refined S6 Edge, which isn't a bad thing. By sticking a Snapdragon 820 chip in the phone, we know that it should last a couple more years, but by 2020 these phones will be considered vintage. To sum it up, I would say that this phone is indeed future proof and will get a 6 out of 10. Add up the scores and the phone gets a 37.75 out of 50, or 75.5%. I don't have to tell you that this is a popular phone because you should know that this is made by Samsung and sold millions of Galaxy S7s in the three variants sold around the world. It's the last Galaxy S device with a physical home button, which may be a good or bad thing depending on how you look at it. It is a solid phone, but even in 2016 we knew that there was room for improvement. And that's it. Let me know what else you want me to review in the comment section or on Twitter at MattOfRWR. Feel free to follow me on the social media listed above. Thanks for watching.